Good evening, everyone. We welcome you all at this webinar on company forms in MCA 21 V3. This webinar is being organized by ICSI in coordination with the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. So uh, the ministry has launched its second set of 56 forms that is uh, on 23rd of January 2023. And 10 out of them were uh, related to incorporation forms. So uh, approximately one month has passed now. So after analysis, it is found that difficulties are mainly re related to creation of login, uh, which may be because of either multiple IDs or there are certain other reasons also. And the difficulties are also related to DSC association and incorporation related forms. Uh, with regard to multiple IDs, we at ICSI has created a Google form inviting details of the multiple IDs and the detail uh, for the ID which needs to be deactivated. And on the basis of self declaration, uh, we are sending the list to MCA and uh, MCA with LTI is deactivating the uh, such <laughs> uh, multiple IDs. So we have also started three helplines with effect from 24th of February. One is for incorporation form, other one is for uh, login DSC and third one is for company forms. So the issues which are received through such helplines are compiled and um, the issues which are generic in nature and uh, which need user awareness maybe, uh, that also we will discuss today and we will try to respond uh, and give try to give some solution. So uh, at this webinar, we have Mr. Vivek from MCA, uh, who is actively involved throughout in this transition period. Welcome, Mr. Vivek. Uh, and from LTI, we have with us Madam Seema Malhotra, uh, Madam Richa, Madam Vijaya Gompana, uh, Mr. Chandra. So uh, we would like to proceed. So I will request Mr. Vivek to uh, give certain guidance on, the, on um, any aspect you want to. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so as Deepa ji has mentioned, uh, we are hosting a number of webinars in association with the professional institutes. Uh, we have uh, created a number of uh, uh, different, we have taken a, diff a number of measures uh, to assist the stakeholders in terms of awareness as well as assisting, guiding them in for resolving technical issues as well. Uh, this is uh, one such measure wherein we will take the questions from stakeholders and we'll try to resolve it. Uh, we have the members from our service provider, uh, Larson and Tupro Infotech here, and uh, they will be taking up and trying to help uh, stakeholders uh, in terms of the issues that they will highlight in this webinar. So I'll uh, ask uh, Deepaji to please proceed ahead with the webinar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> so uh, firstly, I will be taking the issues related to uh, the common issues which are relating to login and DSC. So uh, first one is while creating new user ID or upgrading the ID from registered user to business user, an error pops up, there is a service error. So what could be the solution to this? Uh, so, ma'am, this issue should not be very frequent. However, where there are multiple accounts, so uh, the reasons that could that could throw up this kind of error is one, uh, where the multiple accounts are existing for the user. Uh, number two, the information filled up is uh, not correct, probably uh, containing some uh, special characters. Uh, and I can't think of any other issues where uh, this technical error occurred or there is a there is a service error uh, is prompt up while upgrading the user to a, uh, a business user profile. Okay, uh, but I think information they definitely again visit and they try to fill the correct information. So maybe it is the, the reason maybe for multiple IDs. So do right. you want to say exactly. something on uh, correction of multiple IDs? Yes, ma'am. So we will have to look into these cases individually, identify uh, uh, where uh, multiple accounts have been created using those credentials. Uh, and then we'll be able to identify uh, those errors and get them sorted out. 
so uh, any person who is facing the issue related to creation and upgradation of registered user to business user they have to check uh, the uh, their detail about the multiple ids and they have to raise the ticket specifically to the mc yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so sometimes the <clears throat> by logging into mca v3 portal the specific error which is which pops up is something went wrong so sir uh, we would uh, ma'am we would suggest maybe that is some intermittent error that could happen because of uh, uh, internet uh, uh, disconnecting or some uh, 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 maybe at times that uh, our service is not responding that can be one of the reason but we would suggest user to try in, in after some time because this is not uh, that error which will be a permanent error okay uh now another question related to login is if there are two user ids with one one email id on mcv3 portal and if user wants to deactivate one then it could be possible that uh, other one also gets de deactivated what could be the solution for this so ma'am this is a complex situation where suppose somebody has a user id abc in v2 and a certain email id say abc at gmail.com is associated there okay now the user has created xyz at gmail.com on v3 portal and did some filings also now the design of uh, v3 is such that the srns are associated with that email id so any filings done in v3 using the xyz at gmail.com account the srn should be linked uh, with that email id now if somebody wants to link these now these uh, these two accounts are now different because the email ids are different right the only means of linking to these two accounts is through email id only so it is recommended that the users use the same email id which is existing in in v2 to upgrade to to migrate to v3 and upgrade their profile <clears throat> somebody who erroneously created another account then the email id needs to be replaced in the v2 id v2 account so that these two accounts get linked so you will have one email id which will be associated uh, in v2 and the same email id will be existing as user id in v3 right then the users will be able to view their uh, srns filed in v2 also otherwise if these two accounts are not linked one the srns will not be uh, viewed in v3 if there is resubmission etc they will not be able to refile those forms again so that creates a lot of challenge challenge all right so the only option is uh, if somebody has erroneously created a v3 account using a different email id that needs to be linked with the v2 account and which is possible by sharing it uh, with you through mca ticket yes uh, if you can come to us through mca uh, because this is a data change request we'll have to uh, do some changes in our database so uh, once approved we can get this done next one is if user id migrated from v2 to v3 as business user and while editing the details system asked to file form dir6 so these would be cases where din is associated in the v2 account right so somebody who has a business user account in v2 it is not automatically migrated to v3 as a business user right so using that account uh, the user has to come to v3 portal and upgrade their profile again to make it business user professional <clears throat> now if din has been used in the v2 account and the user is coming to v3 and wants to upgrade the profile the dim creates some challenge where the information is not correctly updated in terms of uh, mobile number or email id etc and then probably i i have some doubt about filing of dir6 probably this should be done through uh, dir3 kyc e form so that the mobile number or email id is updated all right and uh, then the user would be able to update the profile in in v3 account 
so this this situation typically is present when the DIN has been used in the video account. But DIR three KYC is an annual affair. One cannot wait till that time, no. Right. So, but DIR six is not going to help in terms of uh, updating the email ID or mobile number, right? Yeah. So the, the 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 only option in that case would be to update information in in database, and uh, we'll have to come through proper channels to get information updated so that that can be taken care of. So for this, I think something needs to be done. Uh, email ID or phone number change uh, needs to be enabled through certain form. Right. And here is a word of precaution also because. If suppose a user ID for a DIN has been created using a certain email ID, say abc at gmail.com, and somebody files a, a DI3 KYC e form updating the email ID to uh, xyz at gmail.com. Now the user ID will exist abc at gmail.com only because this becomes a, a primary source of information to access the account. Even if the email ID is updated using the KYC e-form, the account in V3 will not automatically change the email ID. User has to continue to use abc at gmail.com only. So the user has to be very, very cautious in terms of using email um, uh, in, in V3 account. So in such cases, can this be a solution that user ID can be degraded from business user to registered user to edit the details? But email ID will not be, uh, the user will not be able to update email ID. Okay. Because it's, it's an identity, right? You created an identity with the email account and now you want to replace that identity completely, which will not be possible. Okay. So uh, next question is related to DSC. There are certain problems while fixing the DSC, like the system doesn't re respond many a times or the error pops up like uh, a fixed DSC is not registered. So what sort of guidance we can give to the user so that uh, if there is an user awareness issue, they can uh, take care of those things. Right, so uh, uh, ma'am, what has happened uh, recently in last uh, uh, two weeks, I believe, uh, the users have been getting this error that the DSC is not registered. And when they try to register, uh, they got an error that the DSC is already registered. All right, so this issue has been fixed and the users can try this information to facilitate the users to identify which DSC is actually registered. In the profile page, we have given this information uh, with the serial number of DSC, which, which, which is registered with the profile so that incorrect DSC is not used uh, while, while signing a form. Uh, now we will be taking the common issues, uh, maybe user awareness issues with regard to the incorporation forms. Uh, in case of characters, word limit in main or ancillary object is, uh, I think it's uh, word limit is around 4,000 characters. Character limit, ma'am. Character limit. So this includes the space also. So this is restricted to 4,000. 4,000. So uh, some we uh, we have got uh, uh, the problem that uh, the uh, characters are not four thousand. Then also the system says that the uh, it has crossed the limit. I have not experienced that, ma'am. We I have done almost fifty user sessions on Spice. At least I have not observed this issue. So the only question caution one has to take is that 4,000 characters are alphabets and including space. Including space, yes. Okay. Next one is at the time of submission of SPICE part B, uh, error many a time times occur that PAN already exists against this SRN. So any sort of guidance or user awareness you want to give for resolution of this case? Uh, so typically, ma'am, this situation arises when a particular PAN is associated with an SRN uh, with a filing done and the SRN is cancelled and the same form is being tried again. However, the form is, uh, the previous SRN is not expired or cancelled appropriately and the user gets this error. So we are trying, we are, we are working on that to get that issue sorted out, ma'am. This is far and few. Uh, 
very isolated cases, uh, but we have we are working on on them to get that sorted out. Uh, next one relates to size. Even if remove after removing all the attachments, system is showing error that total size of all the attachment should not be more than ten MB at the time of uploading the spice part B. Uh, yes, ma'am. So this issue has been sorted out yesterday. However, we have still uh, getting some isolated issues here, uh, where the users have uh, already. Uh, so the users all already attached some documents, and they got a resubmission, and they're trying to attach a very small document of say uh, 20 KB, 50 KB types, but still getting the error because the attachments which are uh, attached earlier they were multiplying. So Suppose if one NOC you have attached, uh, it was creating probably 10 NOCs. And that is how the size was ex exceeding 10 MB. This has been fixed uh, day before yesterday. Uh, and But yesterday I, I saw uh, very isolated cases where this uh, issue was experienced again. So we are trying to fine tune that and getting that sorted out. So probably this week onwards, you should not be facing this issue. Okay. <clears throat> Many stakeholders are facing uh, issue related related to receiving of certificate of incorporation. Uh, Richa, would you be able to update here? I I think. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, see, ideally, as per the uh, uh, system uh, setup, as soon as uh, uh, Part B application is approved by CRC, uh, we uh, generate uh, COI and we share it with. Uh, I mean, we send it to NSDL uh, for Panten issuance, and then uh, as soon as we receive Panten, we generate COI. But if in case, uh, so so, ma'am, there can be two scenarios. One scenario may be Panten may not have been received from NSDL, and that is why we are waiting for CY. Other scenario is CY has been generated and sent to users. Uh, they should check their spam and junk folders. And in third scenario, ma'am, if still uh, they have uh, all these things have been done, but still they have not received the COI, uh, they may uh, uh, send us the SRN numbers. We can quickly check uh, uh, what is the status, whether they have been triggered successfully or not. Okay. And usually, pan tan allotment takes uh, how much time? One to, uh, uh, between one to two days. If it is a successful request, sometimes it they uh, market has failed also, maybe because of incorrect AO code or, uh, or some other error. So typically, ma'am, I have also observed that uh, uh, when the AO code is not opted correctly according to the uh, address in the uh, address and the area. Uh, NSDL rejects those uh, uh, pan tan requests. And uh, the second scenario is where the same address is replicated in in two lines, right? So somebody is is mentioning an address. He has copied the same address and uh, it is not reflecting the correct address. In those situations, also NSDL rejects those items as uh, in incorrect, incomplete address. So these two words of caution to choose the, to mention the uh, address completely without duplicating. And number two, choose the correct uh, PAM or TAM AO code so that NSDL does not uh, reject those requests. Okay. And uh, in case there is a rejection of PAN 10, uh, NSDL must give, uh, I think they might have been giving the communication to the stakeholder that these are rejected because of these, these reasons. I think. <clears throat> uh, no, ma'am. Uh, NSDL does not send any response in case of rejection cases. Only in successful cases, they send the re response uh, separately to stakeholders. In uh, failure cases, they send us back to MC only. To? MC only. Achha, MC only. Yes, yes. Stakeholders have to check to the. Yes, the yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, okay, SPICE issues. Edit option in SPICE B is disabled. Stakeholder is not able to view EMOA and EAOA. There may be certain SRNs. Maybe, yes, ma'am. This is uh, user uh, specific cases. We may have to check what is the 
uh, in what is the scenario maybe they can try now uh, in few cases we have seen earlier that uh, uh, they uh, people were saying that emo eaa were not getting uh, generated but after some time when they again refreshed they went to application history it was getting generated so they can try again otherwise they can uh, uh, let you know the srns and we can check uh, do you want to give some user awareness or uh, some guidance for filing of spice uh, spice plus part a there may be certain use uh, because now there are uh, changes in procedure so the, yeah vijaya uh, vijaya or seema you can uh, uh, guide in terms of filing uh, i think in terms of nic code or whatever has been changed as compared to v2 uh so uh, the changes which we have uh, done as per spice part b uh, a is that the fields which we are uh, choosing and the information which we are providing are going to get prefilled in spice part b uh, so that we should be very careful while we are providing that even though we are taking three nic codes we have to be uh, sure that which which we want, which nic code we want to keep it uh, in our uh, as a first code because that first code will be picked up while prepare while providing the while uh, the sin, sin is being generated for the company earlier what we have provided in uh, the as a uh, the uh, system is that whatever nic code you are filling that is getting prefilled in the main objects of the memorandum of uh, memorandum of uh, the company but now what we have done is we have made that field 3a on the requir requirement of the stakeholders we have made that particular field editable also where you can provide the details up to the 4000 characters so and similarly for 3b also as of now we'll be we have provided you an option to provide the Uh, uh, information up to the 4000 characters and while you are calculating the 3000 4000 characters you have to take care as has been intimated by chandra ji also that uh, you have to uh, not only take the words we have to take characters which include full stop commas space and every uh, every uh, f uh, fixture or every thing which you are putting as an input so as regard regarding spice part a uh whatever uh, now if you see that uh, there are certain messages when you are uh, doing a auto check there are certain fields which are information which are coming in the, in the form of informational message and some are coming as a error messages so unless informational message you have to be the, the system tries to provide you the information with regard to the what uh, applicable rules but if if there are certain information if there is certain requirements which requires that the form cannot be proceed did it had then that will be in the form of a error uh, which would be uh, shown to the stakeholder and uh, just one more thing i wanted to bring to notice to everyone so people may be going to the v2 functionality of checking the name availability now if we check the people come and say that i have checked check the name availability in v2 provision and there it was allowing me to that uh, that i can use this name but when i come to v3 portal and if i try to use that name then the system is either throwing a error or too much information is coming regarding it so we just wanted to bring it to their notice that the the front office services of v2 for the name availability has not yet been uh, updated as per the uh, amended uh, the uh, the rules which has been provided uh, in uh, v3 portal for the filing of spice part a form so uh, it though they can go ahead and check the availability of the name in v2 functionality but they cannot compare the fun functionality of v2 which is provided there in fo services with the uh, spice part a form information which is being provided in while you are doing the auto check so we have to be very sure that now now what we have done is we have uh, uh, incorporated the some enhanced logic while uh, applying for the name similarly we have also uh, digitalized the rules the name rules uh, under rule 8 whatever is been provided uh, uh, through the act we have tried to incorporate those rules in the system so that is why so much informational message or error messages are coming so that the stakeholders do not waste their time and energies in uh, uh, in uh, filing the form and getting a rejection at a later end so we we want to be want the stakeholders to be updated on to those accounts so that is the enhancement which we have provided in uh, spice part a vijay you want to add something more to it okay uh you no, want me to fine. that is fine yeah 
yeah you want me to provide the details with regard to spice part b also ma'am because it's a very detailed form so uh, i'll take out the major enhancement which has which has taken place now what we have done is we have introduced the functionality of emo and eoa for section 8 companies also which was not there uh so <laughs> if your number of stakeholder number of subscribers are less than 20 and i've got din and pan available to them to, so they can go ahead uh, sorry number of subscribers are less than 7 uh, uh, 7 or equal to 7 and uh, uh, they they are uh, uh, indian nationals then they can go ahead and do the file then then they can go ahead and file the moa and aoa uh, in e form otherwise it will go in the form of attachment also similarly for inc9 which is a self generated form if the number of subscribers are uh, equal uh, less than or equal to 20 then they they are require then the this uh, inc9 will be going there as a link fi filing and will be auto generated to the system by whatever information you have provided in field number 7 so uh, uh, on the basis of that system or system auto generates that inc9 and every subscriber who has got din and pan he has to affix their dsc and they have to become a business user filing can be uh, fi uh, filling of the form can be done by the registered user however for affixing dsc it's a it's a requirement that the stakeholder is required to become a business user then only they'll be go ahead, going ahead and uh, putting their dsc uh, in the form itself uh, unless and they go uh, they become a business user they will not be able to go ahead and do the uh, uh, put uh, fixing their dsc on the form so that very purpose is all the subscribers are required to become a business user in this is in this particular scenario and now So if a company has not been incorporated now we have updated that uh, particular system that they can go go and become a business user as a authorized signatory or the uh, secretary in the authorized signatory capacity they can become a business user and they can enhance their profile they they first become the registered user and then become an uh, upgrade themselves to the uh, to the uh, to the business user as authorized signatory or secretary condition and they can uh, go and get themselves associated as a business user and then associate their dsc also uh, so that is how they the users who have come for the first time into the system they are required to put affix their dsc similarly we have also removed quite a lot of attachments from the form like uh, 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 inc 14 15 now they they'll be going as an uh, as an uh, declaration in the form itself uh, which is either some some of it is a part of either uh, inc 9 or urc 1 so uh, then uh, another enhancement which has taken place in the system is that whatever information you are providing in the uh, in spice part b form that'll be getting auto filled in the uh, forms like uh, all the link forms like emoa eoa or or uh, or uh, agile pro or uh, as i said that ought, uh, that's inc9 is a auto generated form so it'll be it'll be it'll be taken care of at that point of time and this functionality was also there in v2 uh, so the so that is how it has been upgraded in v, uh, v3 also so once so uh, now if you are uh, open if your uh, s if you have filed spice part a uh, separately and spice is part b uh, separately then after your uh, spice part a is getting approved then uh, the mini dashboard gets open and then you have to go ahead and do the filing of spice part b or in all the uh, all the link forms which are there in the system uh, besides that vijaya you can add few points if you want to add it Yeah, Sima. I think you have covered uh, more or less all the points. The major changes uh, rela relating to this introduction of EMOA, EOA for Section Eight companies and Part One Section Eight companies, and uh, the linked filings. The way the maybe you have this concept of mini dashboard. Earlier, use uh, users used to click on application number and they used to file the form. Now, uh, when in terms of the, the way filing has to be done. So once you fill in the Part A. or if party is approved so you user have to users have to mandatorily click on a mini dashboard which will be there on the application history against your spice plus part b uh, srn number or the name only then you will be able to uh, see the spice plus part b and once spice plus part b is submitted and all the business rules are validated successfully only then you will be able to see the link filings
Yes. Uh, yes. And just wanted to add one or two points out here also that uh, once you have uh, done, uh, once you are making the changes in any of the link filing forms also. So whatever changes you have done in the link filing or in the main form, uh, Spice Part B, then all other forms will uh, the the link file forms become come into the editable stage because as I told you earlier also that most of the fillings in the all the link filings are done through the whatever information you are providing in Spice Part B because I have seen that people are raising issues around that also. So just wanted to bring it to their notice that if we do not provide you to edit that that those forms also doesn't get edited, then, then whatever information, if you have changed some information in the main form, then subsequent the link filing forms will cannot have anything disparity of information what is provided in the uh, Spice Part D. And one more thing I would request all the stakeholders that though, though they are very competent people and they have been doing the filings for quite a long period of time but i would request everyone to uh, please go through the instruction kits in detail which is providing uh, provided along with the each and every form then also the faqs and also the registration module also so that they whatever in whatever hiccups which uh, we are incurring at the time of the filing of the forms they'll be well guided uh, around it and they will be having a basic knowledge that how to proceed it i am not questioning that they don't know about it but they, but now the systems has changed a little bit so people should be aware that what all changes which has taken place so that they can do the uh, filings accordingly if uh, one get used to doing the filing in v3 I, I assure you that this is much more easier version because here the multiple filings are not taking place the uh, attachments have been uh, removed from the system and uh, uh, the um, uh, pre-filling is happening uh, to the maximum extent so this is one request which uh, from LTI team I can make and also from the MCA aspect I would want to make a request to all the stakeholders Thank you very much, uh, Deepa ma'am. That's all for uh, SPICE form. Okay, thank you. Uh, so some stakeholders are asking about the uh, refund of the fees which is paid in inadvertently or maybe because of the technical issues. So as of now, I think there is no means through which they can ask for the refund. Uh, we will come back to you on this uh, this scenarios of um, uh, if there is an inverted filing from the stakeholders. We will come back to you on that. Some issues are related to attach attachments. Attached documents are not visible after downloading the Spice Part B. Was it an issue whether it is rectified or... Uh, Okay. Ma'am, the kind of issue. user should not face this issue now. So uh, uh, this was coming earlier. This has been rectified now. Master data is not reflecting the correct details. COI is not reflecting the correct details. Was it an issue or... Uh... Is there any user awareness on this or? No, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, actually, first first thing first, ma'am, whenever any form is filed, so data is synced back to V2, reverse sync back to V2 once in 24 hours. So suppose the form is filed today, so then user should check the master data on the next day. So even if, if they are still facing the issue, they should let us know. We'll check and uh, uh, rectify if there is any problem. So how the uh, master data can be rectified, how they should raise the ticket and on that basis? Yes. yes, yes. They should raise the ticket and they should mention the SRN number of the form which they have filed in V3. And according to that, we will check the master data, whether it is, has been updated or not. Otherwise, we will do that from back then. Okay. Not able to edit SPICE Part B for resubmission. Not able to edit or thrive share capital as per the original forms. This is relating to Spice Part B. Ma'am, this is also fixed now. So they should be able to resubmit and uh, 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 resubmit the form. Earlier, this the issue was there, which has not been uh, now been fixed. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, <coughs> one advice that I will uh, I would like to share with uh, all stakeholders here. Yeah. So 
once a spice form comes for resubmission the first thing is to get the uh, spice part be updated uh, the status will continue to remain as uh, resubmission required and rest of the other forms related with the spice part b like uh, eaoa emoa inc9 uh, all these forms etc they should be uploaded so the status after uh, uploading after updating all these forms should be the spice part b as resubmission required all other forms pdf uploaded now once this status is available for all the forms in the mini dashboard then on the bottom right side file option would be enabled till this status does not appear uh, correctly for all the forms this file option will not be available so once the file option is uh, is is enabled then the user can proceed for filing so has to be cautious in case of resubmission of correct status of of these forms okay uh deepa ma'am before proceeding uh, i have one team member with me so uh, there is one guidance we would like to give to uh, our users on dsc yes while affect, while associating the dsc with the din din and business users account so it is advised to change the dsc password by by the e mudra we have this standard password 12356678 which is given to us so it is advised to every stakeholder to change the password before associating the dsc to the business user account yeah so this is one important advice because this issue we we are facing we are seeing with many stakeholders and we are advising them and then their issues are getting fixed yeah okay deepa ma'am you can proceed such kind of actually uh, guidance is required so maybe stakeholders are not aware of such kind of guidance so, yes ma'am yeah uh next one is uh at the time of resubmission of spice part b system is asking for payment again was there an issue such kind of yes, issue ma'am which form spice part b at the time of resubmission system is asking for the payment that again. was also a, a issue ma'am that was the issue in the past this has also been fixed Ma'am, one advice we would like uh, to give on DIR three form. Yeah, so my colleague is here. He will uh, give. So there was we got to know we got to know this issue that stakeholders are confused which DSC is to be affixed in the DIR three form where the director is intending to become a director in any company. So the directors can create authorized representative account. So through uh, associate the DSC on business uh, in a business user profile and uh, use that DSC. So basically, ma'am, if there is a new director who does not have uh, 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 DSC uh, associated with business user account, he can uh, uh, create a business user account in uh, authorized uh, uh, representative category and then can affix his DSC. Okay. The next question is related to uh, company business user ID created. It asked for OTP of one director, and accordingly the same was used. Now, while migrating the registered user of that director to V three for registering her DSC for V three, it is showing that Din is already associated with company business user because of using OTP for company. For the reason it is not allowing to migrate to business user and consequently could not associate DSC. So I think while they have uh, created business user of a company, they have used the OTP which is sent to director. How a director can get the OTP at the time of? Uh, um, while while creating a business user account, so OTPs are sent to authorized representative and directors of the company. Any one can be chosen. So uh, Vijay, Vijay, I think to... this this issue has been taken care of, right? Yes. Your DIN was being used only for the purpose of receiving yes. OTP for company. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, we can check specific scenario in this case. Do you want to say something on this for uh, stakeholders? Any guidance on this? 
No. Okay, next one is a company having its existing MOA and AOA in the format of Companies Act 1956 want to change the name of company SPICE since as per the V3 portal, company has to file EMOA AOA, which will be as per Companies Act 2013. Kindly confirm how many MGT 14 a company need to file for effecting change in name. <clears throat> This is the question for you. Uh, can you just please come up again? They have got the. They have not changed their uh, memorandum and articles as per the 2013. Uh, yeah. So, so ma'am, they have to file uh, MGT 14 for uh, uh, for change in the uh, um, name as well as alteration in articles. So they have to do it separately. As I'm telling, as I'm telling you uh, that uh, there are seven scenarios where the only single purpose, where either memorandum or articles are required to be attached as uh, in e form, then that is to be uh, that is to be uh, done uh, through. Uh, they, that, then they cannot file it for multiple purposes. They have to break it into two purposes if they have to amend either memorandum or articles. So that is what I'll suggest. Uh, uh, that the stakeholders should go ahead and do the filing for uh, one for one MGT 14 for uh, change in the memorandum and another for the change in the articles of the company. Okay. Because uh, uh, that is what mandated uh, by us in the system that uh, you cannot go ahead and choose all the purposes, uh, uh, the multiple purposes when you are either amending your memorandum or articles. Uh, this entire process is whenever user wants to change their name, ma'am. But it is not mandatory that since you have registered yourself under Companies Act 1956, you have to mandatorily file MGT 14. That is not actually uh, that scenario. So we are trying to explain you the cases where user wants to change it, uh, change their name, the company's name. Okay, I am not able to register my register my ID as business user on V3 portal with single name on PAN card, Yogita. Whenever I tried. It says service error. This has been, I think, been updated. Chandraji, if confirm me if I, uh, I think this has already been changed. Yes, Deepa, ma'am, this issue has now been sorted out. And uh, we expect to have received today only. Well. I think they have to check again. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Any question on this you want to suggest? Maybe ma one one point is there. See, uh, ma'am. Basically, we when this data, uh, uh, we whenever user enters the name and pan, so we check with the ITD database. So there is no check at our end. So at at ITD database, last name is mandatory. So if so, we would suggest users that if if they are putting the name in the first name and it is still giving error, try putting their name in the last name text box on MCA and then try verifying with ITD. Okay. If the person is not having last name, so first name he should put in the last name. Also. In the last name text box. Because at ITD, there, uh, at their end, in their website, last name is a mandatory field. Okay. But so, that would be wrong information, no? Because the correct but name ma'am, this is how their system is designed. So that is how we have seen that at times, user is putting first name at MCA site. And they are trying to validate, verify their PAN, it gets, they get a failure message from ITD. So if they have a single name uh, and it is not working through uh, putting their name in first name text box, please put it in the last name and then try. But then if master data gets updated with the Deepa Deepa sort of a thing. No, no, it is not updated. It is just that uh, it is for the verification. Okay. Uh, next one is uh, while filing DIR 12 for CS resignation in a private company, it shows an error that DIN PAN is not associated with the company under selected designation. But as we can check the master data also, both director who is signing the form and the CS who is resigning is associated with the company. With the, with the same DIN and PAN, ma'am? Huh. The uh, error that DIN oblique PAN is not associated, either DIN or PAN, whatever they are putting. They are saying that this is not associated with the company. Like for director, uh, maybe it is a DIN. Ma'am, for which form? DIR 12. 
for resignation of a company secretary? Um, it should not happen, ma'am. But we can check the if they can provide their details. We'll check. Any guidance on DR twelve? You want to give? You might uh, have been seeing a lot of uh, user awareness issues on various forms. So I'm categorically asking for each and every form. For DR twelve, if you have seen, there are certain issues which the stakeholders are wrongly doing anything. If you want to give certain guidance. uh ma'am uh, the guidance which i can give for the uh, uh, for uh, the scenarios which i've seen uh, specially for mr1 and mr2 what is happening is that uh, directors if they want to appoint somebody as a managing director so even though he has been appointed as a managing director they have filed mr1 but since they have not filed the uh, dir 12 for change in designation of the form then they won't be able to get the drop down for uh, the directors uh in if they are trying to file either mr1 or or mr2 as the case may be so unless and until their designation is updated in the system the because what functionality which what we have introduced uh, in uh, v3 is that when you whenever you are trying to file mr1 for any person then the person whose designation is either there as a uh, managing director manager or whole time director then those names will be reflected in the through the system through which only you will be able to provide uh, you'll be able to file mr1 and similar is the case for mr2 also so i have seen that gap while talking to the stakeholders that they say that by I, i have already appointed a director uh, a director in my system but uh, he is i am appointed him as a managing director or his uh, designation is they are changed to managing director they are filing the form for director capacity only not changing their designation so i would request all the stakeholders to in this scenarios if they have to file either mr1 or mr2 then they should be going ahead uh, Uh, they should be going ahead and doing this fi uh, this filing for for the form uh, only when they have filed dir 12 for change in designation of that particular person then only be only they'll be going uh, able to do the filing for the form mr1 and mr2 ma'am and then there is another second information which i wanted to provide to all these stakeholders especially for v3 what is happening is that if a company status is already th uh, there i'm sorry i'm going beyond uh, dir 12 uh, vijay sorry before that i just wanted to request vijay vijay do you want to add any information out there for dir 12 purposes yeah one uh, uh, frequent issue that we have seen earlier is basically suppose whenever especially user is filing for cessation suppose if my designation in the system is managing director or additional director whatever but while filing the form users are selecting incorrect designation so uh, there was some technical issue due to which form was allowed and pp of the updates were not happening because the designation whatever you entered in the form is not matching actually matching with the designation that is available in the system so users are requested to make sure to give a prop select the proper designation which was which is already there in the system to uh, ensure that all the ppf updates would happen properly so this is of the this is one of the issue that we have seen earlier ma'am for many users uh besides that i would like to just inform all the stakeholders that the issues which you were facing in dir 12 while filing dir 12 uh sin being invalid or some some other issues of some sort which was coming in dir 12 Uh, this issues has been sorted out and now this is a very frequently filed form uh, and we are not seeing any people coming forward with any of the issues unless until was company specific but generic issues regarding the filing of dr tell has been creased out and uh, we have not seen any peculiar issue only the peculiar issues are coming to our knowledge otherwise the generic issues of any type have been uh, taken care of and now system is working very fine for uh, dir 12 purposes and ma'am actually as far as uh, enhancement is concerned with respect to dir 12 one major enhancement is to uh i mean person who is getting appointed as a director under any of the roles so they have to mandatorily affix their dsc uh, because consent of the director is removed so it got added within the form itself so which means uh the person who is getting appointed also has to mandatorily affix their dsc which means which mandates him to get himself or herself get registered in the in the business uh, under business user role with date and number and associate their dsc and then only they will be able to sign this form and uh, ma'am so regarding the e formwise enhancements we have actually uploaded faqs 
uh, for all these 46 forms. Uh, and in that FAQ sheet, we have given form-based enhancements also when compared with V2. We would request all the stakeholders to go through the FAQs along with help kits. So that would answer most of the queries in terms of the enhancements, what actually got changed in uh, V3 when compared with V2. And uh, just uh, one more thing I wanted to add, add here, which uh, I think stakeholders uh, will appreciate if, uh, if they come across that scenario. What is happening is that uh, earlier, uh, they, when all the DINs or PANs associated with the company has become disqualified or the, comp or the directors, are, then the company come into standstill position. Then as per the provisions of Section 167, there was a provision that the company can go ahead and appoint the, one of the director uh, and he'll, be, he'll not be disqualified for the period of six months. So earlier it was a back office uh, functionality where the stakeholders were going to the concerned ROCs and they were filing the forms and it used to take them year, more than a year or six months for uh, getting this person appointed as a director. Now this functionality has been brought into the first end. Now if uh, a company who doesn't have any of the dinner pan associated with that particular company or they have become dis disqualified, then in that scenario the, the promoter shareholder can go ahead and do the filing of the form, uh, DIR 12 and can appoint a person and it will not be such a time consuming job the way it was there in v2 yeah okay so this is one of the major enhancement which has taken place besides the consent which was required to be attached uh, at the as a attachment now it has been uh, the director who's being appointed is required to provide to put his dsc giving the consent on in the form itself correct uh, next one is with regard to form number inc 34 EMOA. Uh, it states that you have successfully submitted the form INC 34 and your SRN is so and so, but then it asks that please attach the DSC affixed PDF version of the form. It is happening for AOA, ma'am? Uh, yeah, EAOA, INC 34. INC 34. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, the this is uh, being taken care of by the team, and it'll take uh, uh, it'll be uh, taken care of uh, uh, within a period of one or two days. Uh, so once it is done, then uh, all the things will become smooth enough. Uh, so it'll, uh, it, it is happening. It, it, the fix bu bug fix around it has been is uh, taken care of by the team. Okay. Uh... Next one is while resubmitting incorporation form, authorized and subscribed capital have been automatically changed from 1 lakh to 10 lakhs. And I am unable to change this capital. <clears throat> so, ma'am, yes, this is a, a known issue. Okay. And uh, uh, to, by today, end of the day, this will be fixed. Okay. This is only coming for the V2 migrated SRNs and not for the fresh filing in V3. Uh, there is one form which is filed for change of designation. Uh, after filing a form and successfully submitting the form, the master data says cessation. And today the status is that the company is defaulted in filing form DR12. Ma'am, uh, again a user specific case, we can check it, ma'am. Okay. How can uh, deactivate multiple IDs? Because due to multiple IDs, we cannot convert registered user and, uh, okay. So uh, either you have to create a specific ticket at MCA helpline and, or uh, you can fill our Google form, giving the detail of ID which needs to be deactivated. We'll share with MCA and, um, the backend team will deactivate the unwanted ID. So next one is relating to, we are not able to file INC 23 due to technical error and the last date is here. Is there some issue on in filing of INC 23? No ma'am, now there is no issue. So we have to check what, what is this specific case. Any guidance on filing of INC 23? Have you seen any sort of issues which are some guidance uh, rather than guidance i would say an, an announcement which has taken place earlier the stakeholders were filing 
uh, INC 23 duly filled in, taking a hard copy of it or attaching it with GNL2 and, and sending it to the our concerned ROC also along with the RD. Now this functionality has been done away with. Now th there is no need for the stakeholders to go ahead and do the filing for INC 23 and sending a form to the uh, to, to the concerned ROC because now the system functionality works the, this way that the moment you file INC 23 <clears> with the RD office, a copy of that is uh, through system only is provided to the ROC for their comments thereupon. So the the the, the this, this is how we have reduced a little bit of burden of the stakeholder by no, by uh, stopping them to do the double double filing of the same form again and again to various offices. So this is what we have done for uh, quite a lot of forms which are uh, which are uh, rd uh, forms okay hmm. uh, in inc 22 address is showing blank after downloading and ask for professional dsc in opc case address is shown oh. on blank um, ma'am we will check this because ideally this should not happen we have to check whether it is a migrated srn uh, from v2 or uh, what is the issue we can check this if we if we can receive the srn after registering the digital signature in v3 portal when i proceed to upload the form on portal it says dsc not valid Why there, there are uh, some genuine issues while affixing DSC? Is there any guidance which is required to be given for affixing DSC? So stakeholders are advised, stakeholders are advised not to affix multiple DSCs on a single account. So this, these are creating multiple entries at the back end. And we are trying to solve this issue at the earliest possible. We are looking into the issue and uh, the users which we are able to capture, we are resolving the issue for those stakeholders. However, we are trying to resolve the issue for, for generic stakeholders, generically. There is a saving issue in form INC 28, that is order of court or tribunal. The site shows there is an error, technical error occurred. INC 28. Yes, so ma'am. Actually, yes, yes, ma'am. INC twenty eight. We are uh, uh, seeing uh, complaints from many stakeholders. So we are investigating what is this issue, and we'll come back with the solution soon, ma'am. By today end of the day. So I think this is a common issue <clears throat> which many stakeholders are facing. So we are working on it, and by today we we are planning to resolve it. The directors of the company trying to register themselves on V3 portal of MCI are unable to proceed for the same as the portal is showing error stating that DIN oblique DPIN is already registered with the portal, even though the director has not registered themselves. This should not be the case, ma'am. If the DIN is not registered on the portal, uh, the user cannot get such uh, uh, validation error. And we need to see uh, to the specific case if uh, any any such issue. Ma'am, ma'am, I would like to suggest here what is happening is that the whenever uh, it was a uh, either V three or people uh, they uh, the dins are available with the professionals who are doing the filings for them. So even if the uh, uh, director is saying that he has not uh, got himself registered. Uh, or associated with anything, it could be a professional uh, who, with whom they have provided their DIN numbers and all that. They must have done uh, multiple uh, at, uh, associations with the MCA. So uh, it is as Chandraji is also putting it across to you that uh, this should not be the case unless until you come and register. MCA system will obviously and the, uh, mm -hmm. and the service provider will not do it himself. It is the stakeholders who do it, but somehow they 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 are not aware of it or they don't remember it so either of this can be the scenario uh, so as chandraji is saying that uh, kindly provide this specific issue which they are talking about we will tell them after looking to the system that how they got their uh, they 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 got associated with the system are we getting any issues in raising the mc tickets today mc tickets are getting raised no? nowadays Chandraji? Yes, there, are, there are no issues on that, ma'am. Okay. Uh, the company is not able to One file thing, uh, any of the... 
one thing deepa ji chandra ji are there any points that the stakeholders should note while submitting the tickets because there are some users who are saying they are not even able to do that so ma'am uh, uh, two things that we have noticed uh, while while creating a complaint uh, uh, by navigating to mc services create a complaint uh, two things that we have uh, observed stakeholders uh, who reported that they are unable to create tickets are one they are not using 10 digit mobile number in the field that is provided in the uh, in the intersection and second is choosing the uh, roc so those two are mandatory fields which required to be filled up in the expected format uh, and there should not be any issues in creating ticket okay so next is the company is not able to file any of the form as the address is not getting pre filled on v3 portal the company is not able to verify the pan of director while filling dir12 okay so uh, verification of pan of a director have you received any sort of such sort of issue only uh, that one ma'am which i which we discussed na that first they have only single name and they are putting in first name so would suggest them to try putting the uh, their name in the last name section ah okay while uh, adding the role i am getting error that your middle name is not matching as per pan in profile update there is no option to update middle name kindly uh, suggest the way to add my middle name um uh, middle name is not matching with the pan yeah matlab kitne days hote hain 2 and 20 days hote hain so in the profile update i think there is no option to update the middle name if it is not there we can take note of it and yeah we can take note of this and this is a unique scenario uh, we'll check internally ma'am yeah there may be certain names which are having middle names also so we can Is But why? Uh, why? Yeah. I mean, on MCA portal, they had not given their middle name earlier. Two hundred and forty mandates of them. Your middle name is not matching as per pan. But, But they, now they want to update the profile <laughs> by adding the role. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. We'll we will check this. i am unable to set password of my v3 user ids otps are not coming on mobile and mail both are active otp generation issue what the mandate uh, to uh, yeah, case would you like to take this up uh, so ma'am uh, typically we have verified on in these cases where otps are uh, being delivered by our vendor partner uh problem cases would have been those where the international numbers have been used and although we uh, even though we have passed on the uh, otps to the service provider uh, outside they have refused to deliver it further to the stakeholder but this has been an intermittent issue sometimes they deliver sometimes they do not deliver so unfortunately in case of otp the only option is to retry because we have verified that the otps are uh, uh, being triggered from mca uh, there has been a challenge on uh, service provider side uh, for the respective mobile number so the only option is to retry ma'am earlier we had this facility to uh, assist the stakeholders by suggesting them the otp however uh, owing to uh, security concerns and confidentiality concerns we have completely masked them and we won't be able to assist with the otp generated uh, in the system so the only option is to retry in that case if the email id and uh, mobile number is provided correctly in some cases we have observed that when the user has updated his mobile number i mean same mobile number is just updated mm -hmm. they were able to receive the otp so this is a is something that can be uh, used by the stakeholders next one relates to mgt 14 uh, while preparing form mgt 14 for uh, change of main object clause after submitting mgt 14 uh, moa open but the name of company not pre filled even all the data entered
Ma'am, we will check this case. <clears throat> okay. Uh, resignation of a director. Form DIR 12 was filed by the company and details were updated on MCA portal. However, applicant is unable to file e form DIR 11. The company's SIN is not appearing in the drop down list. Is it a common issue or? No, oh, ma'am, this, no, this is not a common issue. We have to again check this user specific case. But while filing the uh, forms, the CIN, after putting in the name, the SIN and everything should be pre filled. No? The company didn't, SIN is not appearing in the drop down list. They are saying. Uh, next one is in case of registration as a business user and after clicking the create my account, it is showing error as first name is not matching with the PAN. Uh, so ma'am, then uh, that is the, uh, I mean, a, that is not an issue. That is the incorrect validation. So they have to give that name only which through which, which they have given the PAN database. And also we have seen that in some PANs, the PAN ID which is issued, there is a different name. And from the back end, if we see, there is first name, uh, last name, last name, first name. This also uh, is an issue. So if such validation error is there, I think one needs to check from the back end also. There is an option to check the data from back end. So uh, if such kind of validation error is there, one can check from back end also. So typically, ma'am, the name which appears on the PAN card uh, it's not necessary that the same information would be uh, in the in the database. Correct, correct. That is what I'm saying. Yes. So one so, has to check the uh, database. Uh, so when the stakeholders try to use uh, the order of the names, first name, middle name, last name, as per the PAN card, it may not be successful. It may fail. So it is always suggested to use the name as per the database so that it gets validated. Uh, in case of MGT 14, the system is asking for additional fee. However, there is a relaxation till 31st of March. Uh, Ma'am, regarding additional fee for all these 46 forms, additional fee waiver would be given only if your due date of the filing of the form is between 7th Jan and 20th Feb. So due date is nothing but even date plus whatever is the time allowed as per the law. Suppose, for example, MGT 14, is it is 30 days from the date of resolution is what you have to file the form, right? So if you take the event date and then you add 30 days, then that, that due date should fall between these two dates, uh, between now 7th Jan and 20th Feb. Only then they will get the fee waiver. And this logic is equally applicable for all the forms, depending on the event date plus due date. Okay. Uh, all right. So next one is I'm not able to download INC 9 since Monday. While I'm clicking on either download or upload, it just went on processing. Download of INC 9. Ma'am, it might be an intermittent issue. They can check again. This is not, uh, uh, there is no technical issue as such. Okay. In V2, we have filed asset 7, which came resubmission due to version change. In V3, we are unable to proceed further. Showing error as technical error occurred. The, uh, the resubmission cases from V2 to V3, some guidance you want to give? Um, earlier, the they, they, they issues were there in the resubmission cases, which we have sorted out. So uh, I just want to check what is the purpose of this form. Have, have they mentioned it? I said seven. Uh, Ma'am, just wanted to add out here that we have changed the functionality of the processing of one of the purposes, which is increase in authorized capital. Uh, so, if that is the if uh, this uh, SS7 belongs to that purpose, then kindly provide us the SRN of this particular form. Otherwise, like otherwise, also you should provide us the SRN of this particular form. And purpose for which purpose it has been filed. Okay. The status of form CHG1 is approved while downloading documents from action tab. Certificate of registration of charge gets downloaded, but the chalan is not available. Anything on chalan? Uh, not uh, not a generic issue, uh, Deepa ma'am. So 
uh, we can check this case but generally in application history uh, zip file chalans and receipts are available these are available now no? yes, yes there was an issue yeah. while filing form mgt 14 for alteration of object after clicking on submit tab the form inc 33 is required to be filed but there occurs a technical error name of the company does not appear Achha, no problem no we will check this case no problem so this is this question is also from two three users. Inform DPT three last digits of all figures not shown in the downloaded PDF form. For example, if we have filled one two three four five six seven eight in the PDF form, only one two three four five six seven is appearing. Last three digits are not appearing. Have to scroll the text box completely. Because uh, they should be able to see the complete uh, data. Uh, I have registered DSC in V3 portal, but my uh, 20A form is showing that DSC is not registered in MCA. This is showing la from last two weeks. One has registered DSC, yes. but the form says DSC. They have, they have given one facility on our portal now that uh, they can check the DSC which has been registered on portal. So under profile update, there is a new link called show DSC. So if they click on it, yeah, yeah. they are associated. Because many times we have seen that user has registered some different DSC and he's trying to affix a different DSC. So he can check these details under profile update, show DSC link. Index of charges as available in V3 is not updated and the filings done during the last quarter of the year 2022 has not been reflected neither, neither in the public documents nor in the certificates. Ma'am, public view public document is still not available for uh, V3 forms. Okay. So uh, when can we expect this facility? Ma'am, uh, um, uh, planning is to uh, deploy uh, in this month itself. EOA is allowing only one line main object. Is there a chance to complete dis completely describe the main objects instead of one line object? Is it EOA or MOA, ma'am? They say that it is EMOA. EMOA, ma'am. Yes, uh, now we have made this field uh, editable. You can put uh, up to 4,000 characters in 3A, uh, which we have allowed. Now you can go ahead and do that. Uh, that functionality has been added. Yeah. Hmm. How do you register as business user if in spite of filing DR3KYC, you still get OTP in your old number lost? Phone number and email ID, they are not being updated now, right? Ma'am, they have to get uh, it approved from the uh, with all the details uh, and get it approved from MCA unless and until the MCA gives us a guidance, we will not be in a position to do that. Uh, we have been telling it again and again that this uh, functionality of one single user not able to change their mobile number in email ID is a requirement which has been provided from the MCA unless until we get a guidance from MCA to do to make the changes in that. As per now, the system works like this only. If you have to get the changes in this basic information, then you have to come uh, and get the get, get the information or approval from MCA only. Then only be it will be done. Otherwise, as of now, we won't be in a position to do anything about it. Through DIR 3 KYC, you are doing the annual filing. However, as per the user login module, uh, this is entirely a different uh, subject altogether. Uh, so we are not taking the input. It is the input which has been provided by the stakeholder. That only we have, uh, we, we are taking it, uh, that legacy forward now. <coughs> okay. I am trying to submit DIR 12 for appointment of company secretary, but the error shows that PAN of CS is mapped with the existing DIN. CS is a director in other, another company also. No, ma'am, this was an issue which we had seen at the initial period, but now this problem has been sorted out. No, now, when the company secretary is appointed, there are there, no DINs are asked about it. Only the PAN is or the membership number is required to be put for the uh, appointment of company secretary so uh, this should not be a error if it continues
continues it could be a user specific kindly provide us the details we'll look into this matter individually Uh, not able to sign the form. Error is that uh, DSC not registered while we have already registered. DSC sir, ma'am, ma'am, yeah, this. Uh, uh, sorry, Chandraji, please take it up. Uh, let them check in the DSC service. Do you take it portal? You, you can... uh, name approval form in resubmission, but while resubmitting. This is showing error that technical error occurred. Not able to resubmit the form. And there is a last date. Name approval form. Is so we'll check this case. Though uh, uh, name approval uh, filings we are seeing huge in huge numbers, but still we will check what is the specific case here. How to update the name of the director when registering as a business user? Uh, the stakeholder has wrongly updated when converted from registered user to business user. Any add-on requirements? So, add-on update? Can they? No option. No. They can try editing it, mm, but not sure. If somebody has entered the name incorrectly. There is no option as of now. Yeah, they can just try to edit, see if something happens. Uh, I, I personally have not experienced it uh, with anyone who has tried to edit his name. Uh, this needs to be experimented, you know. Oh, uh, okay. I am not able to migrate from registered user to business for DSC registration and I have tried to do it. Uh, cleared cache memories history. It says that reflecting the server error. I think the, there, there should not be an issue migrating from uh, uh, V2 user to V3 uh, unless, uh, so the issue could be one where the address line one is blank, uh, second, any special character is used, third, pan has not been validated. Uh, so these are the scenarios typically. I mean, this specific cases where server error, something went wrong, these needs to be uh, 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 seen indi individually so that we can identify what is causing the issue. Uh, how to resolve associate DSC issue? The DSC is already updated on both V2 and V3, but unable to upload the form. I think DSC issue should largely be resolved, ma'am. Probably these could be older cases. Uh, so we have been experiencing this this issue due to e mudra. Uh, uh, validation of the DSC um, uh, since last two weeks. This has been sorted out. Probably uh, users will not face this issue now. Okay. Uh, form CSR2. In MCA V2, they have filed one and a half month back. Now they are trying to download the CSR2 for a fixing DSC, uh, but they are not able to do so. I think migration. Ma'am, this is nothing to do with the V3 this launch. This CSR2 form is still there in V2 only. User can raise a ticket and our concern V2 team will check and. Uh, uh, so in V2, the, they, uh, they should be able to download, no? Yeah, yeah. Yes, so yes. So the DS. It is in V2 only. So that is the reason why if, you, if they can share the reference number or application number along with the. Hey, uh, okay, so CSR. Three ninety-four mandates of effort. Which was not. Ah, uh, downloading the PDF. Okay, maybe some new specific case, ma'am. So they can download it in V two system, ma'am. Ah, V two system, yeah. Form pass three return of allotment is not accepting PDF file as an attachment and asking for Excel file only. So this is a mandatory requirement to file in Excel. Pass three. Uh, which attachment one? If it is a list of allotted details, then you have to do in uh, Excel map. So if user can specify which, which attachment you can add, then you can. If it is for list of allotted, yes. So we have given a prescribed format and they have to attach in the form of Excel only. Okay, that is mandatory. Uh, we have filed form INC 22 for change of registered office, but uh, the error is digital verification failed. We have also fixed the DSC. Maybe specific. 
Next one is related to uh, all forms getting filed, but while filing SPICE AOA, error uh, is coming. Please fix valid DSC. There are lots of issues related to DSC. Ma'am, as, uh, as, as I have already told you and communicated to you that this is a known issue and the team is trying to fix it for especially for AOA purposes. Uh, it will be take it will be taken care of and in a day or two and uh, I may be uh, here taking more time but uh, the team is already on to the job now. In DPT3 form is asking to enter mandatory SRN of GNL in which DPT1 is filed even though it is not applicable. Ma'am they are trying to file for which purpose ma'am? And what is the company status, whether it is a private company? It is too lesser information for us to give a reply. However, uh, in the new, uh, this thing, DPT uh, uh, version, which is going to come, uh, it'll be only be asking for the uh, uh, GNL to SRN only when uh, you are choosing the purpose one and three and uh, you have taken collected the deposit from the public. Then only you are required to provide that uh, SRN of uh, uh, GNL to ma'am. Uh, I need to file MR, <clears throat> MR1 for full time director in V3 portal, but only details of MD is coming. I am unable to file. Ma'am, this so issue is uh, resolved now and they can try filing. Let's create. Whether the liquidator is to be registered under business user or authorized representative category. Uh, he is, uh, as of now, uh, we have not created the sep uh, separate category for the uh, IRP, RP liquidator. They have to go then register themselves as an authorized uh, signatory only. Uh, but they'll be able to affix their DSC only in case if they're MGT 14 and I, they have been appointed as a IRP, RP or liquidator in as per MGT for form filed in V3 and uh, for uh, voluntary uh, for voluntary liquidation of the company. Uh, then only they'll be uh, the uh, this uh, this uh, company status on approval. The company status will change into either CRP proceedings or uh, uh, they or uh, under liquidation. Then only they'll be able to go ahead and do the association of their DSC. Like they they should go and they'll be able to affix their uh, uh, sign on the DSC on the particular form. Similarly, if it is through NCLT order, then if they filed uh, done the filing of INC 28. Uh, in V3 and the form has got approved and the uh, status of the company has also changed then only they'll be able to do for future filings of that particular company as a IRP RP liquidator however if they were appointed as a liquidator in V2 process and the company status was under liquidation in V2 then they have to continue doing the filing the way it, they were doing it earlier okay uh, next one relates to how to register DSC of bank manager with PAN of bank for CHG1? Uh, Ma'am, currently this functionality uh, uh, of registering your DSC against the bank PAN is not available. In, in fact, in V2 also, this is not available. So if user wants to, uh, obviously user has to give as part of filing CAG 149. So they have to give a pan, a pan of the banker, but they have to, in terms of fixing the DSC, they will be giving the nodal officers uh, DSC. So uh, we are actually working on this map. So currently maybe users are getting an error saying that uh, DSC is not associated with pan. So in these cases, basically we have to relax the DSC validation text because currently there is no functionality of uh, associating DSC with the banker. It is only there for, in, for an individual, right? So we will be relaxing this validation so user will not face any issue. They can, uh, they will be able to uh, enter the pan of the bank, uh, uh, pan of the charge holder or banker, but uh, give the DSE of the nodal officer. So 
uh, team is already working on this. Maybe in uh, one or two days, this will be uh, fixed, ma'am. Okay. Uh, the portal is not uh, able to distinguish between FCS and ACS because there may be same number with uh, someone who is having yes, ACS yes, ma'am. ICS, like we are facing this problem with ICS. Again, now uh, we are working on that, ma'am. So we will we'll be adding this uh, associate and fellow fields uh, uh, in user registration module very soon, ma'am. But as of now, it is not available. We are working on this. Mm, how? Sorry. Okay. My director ID in two portal already created while updating the same as business user date of birth found wrong. How to rectify the same and update in V3 portal for filing the forms? If one has wrongfully written the date of birth, they want to correct. So this should be a case from V2, ma'am, because uh, uh, in V3, you are doing a pan validation. Personal details are verified. Uh, so this should be a case of V2, probably uh, if the users can come through authorization to uh, change the data. That way, only this can be entertained. Yeah, currently we are not allowing uh, to change their uh, name and date of birth on profile update screen. If you are trying to upgrade uh, to DIN, uh, I mean director role map, so that is what is causing the issue. So user has to uh, raise a ticket along with all the proofs and details. So then this has to be changed. I mean currently there is no functionality available to change the details of name and date of birth on the profile update screen. If you are uh, upgrading yourself to a director. We are not able to file form CSG 9 as MCV3 portal shows DSC of certifying professional is not associated on MCA V3. And we are able to file other forms with same certifying professional. This can now be tried, ma'am. The user should not get the error now. Uh, are there any problems which are being phased on form SH8 and SH9 for buyback? No, ma'am. We don't have any issues with regard to SH8 and 9. Uh, we have uh, quite a lot of filings around SH8 and 9. Earlier, there were certain issues which we, were, we had seen uh, for SH8. Now, all these uh, things have been sorted out and... Uh, all the uh, the and we have already seen quite a lot of filings for SH8. Uh, please tell user to go ahead and do the filing for SH8 and 9. Uh, I don't think so. They should be have facing any problems on around it, ma'am. I think maximum questions are relating to DSC and login. Everywhere I'm seeing that there are DSC problems and login. Any particular guidance on DSC? Why lots of problem on DSC association? So in the last two weeks, ma'am, yes, we uh, we also observed uh, uh, a lot of uh, tickets and calls related to DSC. Uh, one of the primary reasons was failure of the DSC uh, verification from Emutra. Uh, this issue has been taken care of, and the users can now try. Uh, I, I hope this issue should be sorted out. On the login, we understand that multiple types of errors have been committed by the users themselves also. Multiple accounts created, uh, etc. Those are causing the issues. But we will we'll definitely try the users to, to get them onboarded to V3 so that uh, they can observe smooth seamless filing on V3. Okay. Uh, I have filed form DR12, but resignation is still not reflected on MCA portal. You are saying after maybe one, two days, it will get reflected. Then next day, they should check. Uh, we are unable to upload IEPF online verification form with regard to IEPF claim. A technical pre-scrutiny error pops up every time stating PAN of the nodal officer is not associated with the DIN or DSC of the nodal officer is not registered. Ma'am, IPF form is still in V2, so they can they can uh, log the ticket and V2 uh, support team can will check and report. Yeah. 
हाउ टू पे पेनल्टी फॉर आर डी ऑर्डर पे मिसलेनियस फी इज गेटिंग बी डायरेक्टेड टू बी बी टू पोर्टल एंड नॉट एक्सेप्टिंग बी थ्री एस आर एन मैम एक्चुअली फॉर ऑल वेन एवर आर डी फॉर्म इज फाइल एंड एनी पेनल्टी और एनी पेमेंट इज इन्वॉल्व येस करेंटली मिसलेनियस फी ऑफ बी थ्री सर्विस इज नॉट अवेलेबल एंड बी टू सिस्टम इज नॉट एक्सेप्टिंग B3 SRN. So now the solution, uh, as of now, ma'am, temporary solution is basically users have to select the individual option which is coming from the drop down of uh, B2 miscellaneous fee service. But only the issue is they will not be able to link it with the uh, uh, SRN of this uh, regional director, whatever is the form they have filed with the RD. But they can give a reference of SIN number and they can uh, attach these details or I mean share these details with the respective RD, ma'am. so currently this is the option that we are we are providing which is basically they have to users have to make all these penalties or miscellaneous fee payments of b3 by selecting individual option in b2 miscellaneous fee service but please make sure to give a reference of sin number because srn fee you will not get it in when you are selecting individual option so we would request stakeholders to make sure to give a correct sin number and company name while uh, making the payment on the individual tax and provide that receipt uh, when while filing inc 22 with the uh, concerned roc so that they know that the this uh, the they have already done the compliance with the rdo order okay uh like for i think company secretary professionals only my the system says while filing moa or aoa or any other form my dsc is not associated with my membership number i think acs fcs issue when is it is expected to get resolved i think this is the issue membership number is not associated with dsc Uh, ma'am actually time I, right now we don't have the timeline as of now but uh, we discussed in detail uh, uh, i mean in this week itself so we will very soon you will get this uh, change implemented next one is where, where should the banker register his dsc in mca b3 for filing charge related form ma'am we have already answered this question so currently there is no such functionality available yeah. so charge related forms are difficult to be filed then no 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 ma'am so we will be relaxing dsc uh, role check validations because this is how it is it used to happen in v2 also okay. so until and unless we will introduce this associating dsc with banker so they will not be able to associate right so i cannot put a restriction at uh, form level so we will be relaxing uh, those uh, dsc related validations for okay. those cases for uh, these three forms ag19 and 4 for each and every form we are uploading uh, we are uploading we are asked to register the dsc again and getting the error dsc validation failed dsc dsc everywhere ma'am <laughs> so we need to check ma'am what is because as of now uh, we have resolved all the dsc related issues and if uh, still they are getting issue we'll check uh, case by case i think we have received lots of queries we will be sending you uh, there are lots of dsc related issues only i request you to go through each and every issue and sure ma'am sure deepa ji maybe we can take top 5 uh, next top 5 issues and yeah, yeah that is what i'm saying if anything is different uh, because hmm. i could see dsc and login issue lots of these issues so uh master data updation are also the issues which are like pass 3 is approved on 14th of february they are saying but master data of the company is still not up updated in these cases i think they can be considered case to case if they raise a ticket uh, richa ji i think your team can handle yes yes ma'am yes sir okay. not able to fill form fc4 as the column specified are not accepting zero fc4 they are not accepting <sighs> ma'am uh, yes uh, that uh, this is a known issue we are working on this issue this will uh, take uh, some time we will uh, we are in the process, uh, process of getting it uh, enhanced and updated uh, 
uh, we'll get back to you on this. I will uh, request through this forum. So whenever a user is facing a technical issue, please raise a ticket so that we are able to monitor all these defects or the bugs that are there. While the team is working on them, it is important for us to identify these issues as well. For small companies in e-form, uh, V3 asks for certification. Which is not applicable. Ma'am, this this we we were seeing this issue in uh, quite a few forms uh, previously, and then we have fixed it. But still, if you if user is getting this issue, can you mention which form, ma'am, so that we can again get it very Okay, I think then mostly uh, these are repeated. We will share the list. Uh, more than five hundred issues right now we have received. So most of them I have taken, and then. Uh, we will share the complete list with you for analysis and rectification. And uh, I will also request all the stakeholders to share the issues through Google form because Google form has uh, all the required areas like ticket number and the screenshots and everything, name of the member, email ID, phone number. If required, we will contact the stakeholder and uh, we will share all the issues to the LTI team. Uh, so I think with this, we are closing the webinar today. Thank you for all the stakeholders and thank you for giving necessary guidance. If uh, any of you, uh, Vivek sir, uh, LTI team, if any of you want to say something at this platform right now, please. Uh, so uh, thank you to ICSI for giving us an opportunity to talk to the stakeholders directly. Uh, so we, uh, Deepa ji had mentioned earlier during the introduction that they have opened, uh, they have opened a channel for receiving the issues of the stakeholders. Similarly, other professional institutes have parallelly opened these help desk mechanism so that these issues of the stakeholders can be collated and they can be given to the service provider. Parallelly, we are also, uh, we have also, you know, uh, stabilized our, uh, support team and we are also taking care of the issues that have been highlighted in other forums, uh, uh, be it social media or the help desk or through email as well. And uh, while we collate and we, you know, try to understand the ma major issues and try to resolve it, uh, we will need the support of our professional institutes and uh, the stakeholders as well to please read the FAQs and the updates that we keep on um, making on the website. Whenever there are some user awareness issues we identify, which are you know faced by a lot of users, we keep on updating our FAQs and put all these information on the website uh, under the important updates. I will request the stakeholders to please follow those uh, when they are uh, you know either upgrading their profile or registering on V3, because a lot of these issues are repeated issues. We, uh, stakeholders are used to filing in the V2 system where there was uh, not much. Uh, uh, you know, check and uh, validations for login and registration. Now that we have done it, there are, you know, issues related to upgradation as well as new registration when people already have uh, login IDs in V2. All these are repeated issues. So, uh, you know, uh, th there might be some technical issues also in login registration, but what we are, uh, what, what we are witnessing is that a lot of it is due to the awareness, uh, awareness of the new module. Uh, so, you know, they, therein we request that the stakeholders please uh, keep themselves updated with whatever is the latest change. And all these, you know, we keep on uh, providing through our FAQs, through our, uh, uh, you know, important update sections on the website. All these changes we keep on displaying even, even through our social media, Twitter channel, whenever there's something important, uh, some important changes or information that we need to display to the users, we keep on updating those. So, uh, you know, I will request the stakeholders to uh, refer to those information, which are very important when you are working with the new portal. All these new changes, whatever that we are bringing in, I understand there will be some learning curve. There will be some issues with the system also, some teething issues, and that the technical team will take care of. But as far as the awareness issue goes, uh, I will request them to, you know, uh, use the forum of the professional institutes that they have opened up or utilize the website to understand all these, you know, new uh, 
new ways and the new functionalities of B3. That is all. So, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, everyone, for giving guidance. Thank you, professionals, for uh, raising the queries and understanding. So, we are closing the webinar for the day. Thank you so much.